to Motoganda and as well welcome to a topic we all know so good. So let's talk about democracy. Or at least what we think we know about democracy or basically what we are told democracy is is full of it explaining what all it is and funny enough whenever it failed when votes don't go the desired direction so I could do it the same way some other alternative media do it and go all the way back to the Greeks how they define democracy and that nowadays democracy is all a different thing and so on but I'm not going to do that for one simple no for two simple reasons basically first reason being it's covered by so many other alternative media so if you want to check that out just search for it on YouTube and for the other reason I mean that's ages ago. That's so long ago when the Greeks invented, don't know if that is the right word, but let's say invented or founded democracy, that obviously their definition nowadays doesn't apply anymore. Of course, back in those times, I mean, remember they had slaves and they ha had a quite violent society even more violent than nowadays actually and it was basically a different time I mean how many centuries ago this was so I want to focus more on how we define democracy in nowadays or how we are getting told it should be defined. So let's have a look at mainstream media. There the definition seems to be pretty simple. Democracy for them seems to be when people go to vote and the outcome is in favor of what the mainstream media wanted. And why am I saying that? Well, there are countless examples where the people voted, the mainstream media didn't like the outcome, and what were the reports? Well, that's a threat to democracy. And they even go on certain occasions one step further and naming alongside with democracy stuff like um, rights of minorities, for example. Well, if they really believe that that is democracy, um, they kind of got it not just wrong, but completely wrong. Actually, com completely opposite than what it is. Of course, what does democracy actually mean? Is that everyone has an equal vote. So, let's, let's take an example. Let's say 100 people vote for anything and out of those 100 people, let's say 90 are pro whatever they vote and 10 are against it. So those 10 people are obviously the minority, right? And let's say even it was some minority rights thing doesn't matter so in a real democracy you have 90 votes for it 10 votes against it or the other way around so it will be always in favor of the majority and never in favor of the minority. So naming anything related to minorities alongside 
democracy is just turning the actual meaning of democracy upside down. And there is even a quite cool quote, I forgot actually who said it, but in my opinion that explains perfectly democracy. So the quote goes like that. Democracy is if three wolves and one rabbit meet and they decide what is up for dinner. And guess what? It won't be any veggie dinner. So three o'clock in the morning and on my way home. But at least the streets are empty. Like no one lives here. So now think about it. Do you actually live in a democratic state? I mean, as I said, democracy to me at least means everyone has an equal vote. So, for example, just a simple question. Just imagine any bigger infrastructure project going on in your country or state or even just city like a bridge or school or something basically bigger so were you able to vote for or against it or was it more likely just decided by your local administration. And if the second thing is the case, well, sorry to tell you, but in my opinion, that's not really a democracy. And yeah, I know there will be now some smart people out there saying, but well, we have representative democracy. So we elect our representatives and then they do those decisions. I mean, obviously in kind of bigger setups, let's say anything that is bigger than 1000 people or so, it's pretty hard for everything to call for, for a public vote. So. Imagine like a really big country with 50 or 100 or 200 million people. All right, so you elect your representatives and they represent you. But do they really represent you? So could you then go to that representative I mean directly, yes, you voted for him so, and he is supposed to be your, your representative, so do you have the chance to meet him in person, go there and say, hey, I am absolutely against or else absolutely for this yeah, infrastructure program, let's say, for this bridge. Let's say the bridge. Could you do that? And even more important, if the majority of, let's say, the county the representative comes from, if the majority goes there and tells him that they're against it, what do you think this representative would do? Would he go and basically fulfill his duty voting as the people told him or in case the opinion of the representative's party is different would he rather then still vote in favor or in line with the party CBR that's cool even if I'm riding a GSXR but anyway 
So if you have a look at such uh, votes with the representatives, most of the time you will see that one party is nearly entirely for it and one party is nearly entirely against it. So the norm rather than the representative asking the people who elected him and sticking to that opinion, the norm is rather that the representative sticks with the party. So whatever the party's opinion on a certain topic is, most representatives will vote in that way. So basically it's not your representative, but it's just a party representative. And why is he going to my lane? You're a representative of your lane, buddy. So yeah, well, that's not too much democratic than neither. In my opinion, at least. But well, just let me know what your opinion is about it. Do you still think you live in a democracy or did you even before think you don't live in one? Or maybe did I convince you? Just let me know in the comments. And obviously, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And I see you in the next video.